Okay guys, I thought I'd talk you through a little project that I've got going on for a portable boombox speaker. Um, the idea of this is to create something that is as loud as possible from the smallest size, very efficient. And we're not just focusing on bass, we're focusing on general volume of music and being able to fill a room with a massive party sound um, from a portable kind of unit here. I have got a, a kind of portable boombox already and this is the um, Beats Box uh, by Monster. Uh, uh, or by Beats Dre, uh, which is probably about the only thing by them that I think is half decent. It is, I think it's two 5.25 inch woofers, might be four inch, uh, and they're sealed, uh, and the tweeters there are half, uh, quite wide range tweeters. They play up high. I think they play down to sort of like a random around about th sort of thousand hertz, quite low for tweeters. Um, they've got big rubber surrounds. They're like uh, speakers you'd find on an iPod dock. And then the bigger woofers there in the sealed chamber take over and take me right Right down to about 30 hertz, 29 hertz you get out of this if you put it in a corner and it's a sealed box so it sounds very nice and accurate but it's not quite as loud as I want and I thought we could do better than that. So yeah, 6.5 inch woofers in this one. Um, and they are coaxial drivers, and you'll see them in a minute. Um, so they're not massive X Max drivers, they're not huge bassy sort of subwoofer type drivers. And so, what I've done here is I've designed an enclosure to try and get as much bass and as much uh, range out of the low end as possible. Now, you might not have seen this design, design before, it's not a bandpass because the front of the speaker, the front wave, is directed to the open world. Um, obviously, this being a coaxial, we need the tweeters to fire forwards. So the rear wave enters two chambers at different frequencies. The first chamber here is a sort of a bigger chamber, and this first chamber, with its port for getting the second chamber is tuned to about 70 hertz. So when the driver is placed to play 70 hertz, this port will load the cones and 70 hertz will be very pronounced. Now this second chamber has a port in it that tunes the whole enclosure including the first and second chamber to 32 hertz. So obviously when this first internal port is loading the cones at 70 hertz, 70 hertz is way above the 32 hertz tuning of this second port. So what happens is this port is unloaded. It doesn't affect the wave in any way because the frequency which is passing through it is way above um, any sort of frequency which will it'll, uh, create a Helmsholtz um, effect at. And so what happens is it just passes through and we are listening to this internal port passed through this second port. When the woofers play a lower frequency, say 35 hertz or 32 hertz, this internal port is bypassed because the frequency is so low that it's unloading. It's just basically a hole in the box. So it's a hole in this baffle. Um, so the woofers will then, rather than seeing an, a first chamber with a 70 hertz port, the woofer cones then see the box as a hole through this port as if it wasn't there and load off the second port at 32 hertz. So obviously in between those two frequencies, we'll have a combination of both ports. Um, obviously the internal port will be unloading a bit and then the uh, the second port here will be loading a bit so we should get a very wide range um, I'm trying to get obviously as much range of bass out of these as possible I wanted to keep the the thumping kind of accurate nice punchy response that you'd get from a 70 hertz port we're playing sort of party music here but then I also wanted a little bit of soft sine wave kind of bass when it did play a lower frequency so I haven't tried this style of box before but I thought we'd give it a go if it turns out it's rubbish then I might just take the top off and remove this internal port and just have it fully ported to 32 hertz but we'll see what happens now obviously this is going to need to be a fully active um, enclosure it's going to need to have an amplifier and an input board and all sorts of stuff like that so let's take a look at that stuff now now these electronic components here are just from ebay um, we have here a power supply board um, yeah that's right that's the power supply board and what this does is this takes mains power which in the uk here is 240 volts uh, with generally a maximum of 13 amps and what this does is this converts it into 80 volts plus and minus so it's 80 volts plus and in ground and then 80 volts minus which is just so happens what this little amplifier board requires for its power input so these combined is the amplifier power supply 
and final amplif amplification board. Uh, this is 250 watts at 8 ohms, which is pretty awesome. Um, it is a Class D style amplifier. Now, this is a party boombox. We're not talking huge SQ here. We just want to get stupidly loud um, from the small space as possible. And these are pretty good value off of eBay as well. Um, so the two together uh, didn't cost me very much at all. So obviously on the amplifier, we've got basic RCA inputs. We have got some gain control on the amplifier itself, however it is basically just for adjusting the amplifier once and then leaving. So we're going to have to control the volume uh, on the input uh, side here. And now this is where it gets a little bit interesting and a little bit fun. What we have here is uh, something which I found which is relatively new actually out on online um, and it comes in a couple of parts here. This is an audio DSP board. This is by Shure Electronics. It is very, very cheap. What it comes with is it comes with two parts. It comes with the main DSP board here. Now, for those of you who don't know, basically this board will allow me to completely customize the characteristics of the sound before it goes to the amplifier. So obviously that's a plain old amplifier, no equalization. And so the speakers, won't necessarily be completely flat and I might want to change the characteristics of the sound a little bit, a bit more treble, a bit more mid, a bit more bass, whatever. Um, and this board here allows me to do that with incredible flexibility. It doesn't come programmed with any real preset equalization though. What we've got on here is we've got a whole bunch of inputs, kind of got some pins here. Now um, we've got some potentiometers as well. This comes preloaded with a little program that has um, front speaker left and right and subwoofer output. So we have, for example, um, front left and right volume, front left and right high pass crossover value, subwoofer volume, subwoofer crossover value. And obviously the inputs and outputs for those channels are on here. Uh, if we just get this right, we have the two RCA inputs here, and then we have front, left, front, right, and subwoofer output. And that connects to this board via a little 10 pin ribbon type cable here. And so we can adjust the values on there. I don't particularly like the preset. Um, it's not EQ'd, obviously, it's flat, uh, and the um, crossovers are very, very kind of rounded. Um, you don't really get much sharp roll off. It doesn't make a lot of difference when you turn the potentiometers. So what we want to do is we want to program this chip to EQ and crossover specifically for the drivers which we're gonna be using in the boombox. Now to do that, you need to you need to program it with a computer and some, some fancy software called Sigma Studio. To do that, you need to be able to connect it to a computer. It does have a USB port here. However, that is purely for power. It takes five volts input. And so that's no good for programming it from the computer. To program it, we need a basically a USB I kind of interface board. Now this is the eval board, evaluation board, um, which is about four times the price of the DSP board, which makes sense because with one of these boards you can program as many of these chips as you like. So they've priced it not for the cost of the components, but they've priced it for what you could do with it. If you're start, starting a business and including these in a product, then obviously this bit is the bit that allows you to program all of your products. So that's why it's a little bit more expensive. So this part here needs to be connected to this part in a way that will allow the computer to communicate between obviously this board here and then read and program the EEPROM chip in this board uh, and annoyingly they don't come um, married up the, the the pins don't all match up basically this came with uh, a 10 pin um, adapter on there um, and this has a six pin adapter for connection to the computer for programming and the this kind of usbs and stuff here the data uh, write and read etc um, so what i've had to do is i've had to snip all of the cables off here i'm just waiting on some jumper type connectors and then i can attach them to the correct corresponding pins on there so that the computer can communicate with the dsp board and i can program it with sigma studio 
So that is a work in progress so whilst how far I through the build I am. Put the box um, obviously got the front, the middle baffle there and the side and the base. Um, this is how far through the build I am so far. Um, I got a little bit stuck because um, obviously I need controls on here. So I need to be able to control the volume um, and things like that from either the front or the top of the box. Um, and we have the DSP board down here which has the potentiometers on it. Um, so I either need to have this board here accessible or with through a little screwdriver or something which is a little bit awkward for changing the volume uh, quickly or I need to solder a, another potentiometer, um, a bigger one that I can attach to the front or the top of the box to the correct potentiometer here for changing the overall volume um, or I need to put a um, RCA gain knob which you can pick up you've seen them on ebay they're for cars um which is basically just um rca input and then a big potentiometer kind of in a case and then output and it just limits the input volume before it goes into the dsp which is probably what i'll end up doing because that's the simplest and that controls the volume of the whole system um, now obviously with this uh, setup i'll only be using front left and right output for the two uh, coaxial speakers the subwoofer output won't be used at this time however i'm going to hook this subwoofer output up to a little um, rca output on the back of the box which will allow me to add a subwoofer to this boom box if i want to if i'm taking it to a bigger style party then what i might do is i might build a little subwoofer box as well with its own built-in amplifier board designed for the sub and then i can just plug it into the back of this and fire it up and it will play uh, as per the crossover and the um, equalizer that i've got set up in here which would be fantastic so right now i'm just figuring out how to attach a volume knob um, either to the top or the front of the box um, without obviously there being any air leaks and things like that so i'm just trying to work out the best way to do it right now now the drivers, I'm being lazy because they're all the way down in the studio and I can't be bothered to go down there at this time of night. So I'm going to show you some Google images. Um, these are P Audio um, and they're SN6150CX. So they are um, sort of PA style coaxial drivers. They're very high efficiency, which is what we want here. We want to be able to get as loud as possible with as little power as possible. Um, so as you can see, the pretty deep mounting and the reason for that is we have obviously the uh, motor for the woofer driver and then the compression tweeter which is screwed onto the back through the pole piece and fires through the dust cap if you like so you can see here get a little bit of a better picture from the front that's what it looks like from the front we've got a little surround um, not massive x max on there so you want to keep the cone loaded quite nicely and i'll probably need a high pass filter on there of some sort as well if we're going crazy volumes and the tweeter has a horn flare through the center of the pole piece there so that should be nice and efficient and get nice and loud and then we've got a pair of them there so this is what i've got downstairs so yeah let me know what you think so far and watch out for part two when i will be assembling this a little bit further and um, testing out the basic amplifier with the speakers and seeing how it sounds in this kind of funky enclosure that i've designed